strobing and stretch. So a fundamental requirement for uh, realism in, in animation is the psychological effect of the perception of motion. So uh, this illusion occurs when the brain interprets a sequence of images as being the apparent motion of an object. Uh, this is also called uh, beta movement. Now sometimes uh, this uh, psychological effect, which is essential for um, animation to be possible, uh, is called persistence of vision. That, that persistence of vision is actually a different um, optical psychological uh, phenomenon. So. Now, when the action is slow and the sequence of images uh, for an object uh, are not so different from in position from frame to frame, then it's rather easy to uh, maintain the perception of uh, motion. On the other hand, when the action is uh, very fast, then the perception of motion uh, can be lost because instead of interpreting the sequence of drawings as being the same object at different places, uh, the brain can imagine that the object has disappeared and a new object has reappeared uh, someplace else. So uh, this uh, disruption of the perception of motion in uh, animation is uh, called strobing. So uh, here we see uh, some simple uh, ball bounce uh, animations. Uh, the one on the right uh, has a relatively smooth motion and uh, we uh, maintain the perception of motion of a, of a bouncing ball. Uh, the one on the left, uh, there's some, some gaps and because of that gap it um, almost seems like the ball uh, sort of re uh, appears at the bottom and then appears near the top and then um, uh, appears near the bottom. Now, uh, you, uh, if you're trying to check your animations for um, this uh, strobing, it, it's somewhat helpful to uh, watch the animation in your uh, uh, peripheral vision. Um, then uh, in the peripheral vision, your uh, brain is exceptionally um, attuned to uh, observing uh, motion. Uh, that's actually a good tip in, in general for checking your animation. Now, uh, another way of seeing this uh, disruption of the perception of motion is uh, if you're in some place where there's uh, strobe lights and so you have flashing lights uh, maybe at 10, 20 flashes uh, per second uh, or, or maybe even higher. Then if you uh, quickly move around, say uh, flail your, your arms uh, around, then uh, you won't actually perceive your uh, arms as uh, moving. It just appears as if they are um, uh, multiple, multiple images. So this is just another example of the uh, disruption of the of the perception of motion. In this case, the strobe light takes the uh, uh, the role of the uh, frame rate in uh, animation. Now, uh, a similar effect occurs uh, when we have the wagon wheel illusion. So, in the wagon wheel illusion, uh, we see a, a a wheel on a car and uh, the spinning of the wheel appears to be uh, backwards from what we know must be the direction of the spinning given the, given the, the direction that the car or the uh, uh, stagecoach is, is traveling. So, uh, so this is again a disruption of the perception of motion but in this case the motion appears to be uh, backwards from uh, 
what we know must be must be the true motion. So here's a video that um, uh, illustrates this. This is a uh, propeller on an airplane, and uh, the propeller is uh, spinning faster and faster, and and yet it appears that the propeller seems to come to a stop and then turn one direction, then turn the other direction, then come to a stop. Uh, but the propeller is not uh, changing the direction that it's turning. It's always turning in the same direction. And in fact, it's going faster and faster. But due to the frame rate of the camera, uh, sometimes we're synchronized with the propeller. Sometimes we're ahead. Sometimes we're behind. So uh, this um, wagon wheel illusion is an ex example of uh, what's known as the Nyquist effect. So in this case, if we imagine a uh, like a stagecoach wheel that's turning, and on the first uh, frame we have it here, this uh, yellow uh, colored wheel, and then on the next frame. It's positioned where the blue wheel is. Uh, so the actual rotation is counterclockwise. But due to the Nyquist effect, we have the illusion that it's turning clockwise. And uh, the reason is that uh, the brain doesn't interpret the motion as being uh, this spoke actually turning uh, counterclockwise. Uh, to this uh, position. Instead, it imagines that this uh, center spoke has uh, rotated backwards and is now positioned here. The problem is that uh, the brain misinterprets this because uh, what it imagines, uh, it, sorry, what it imagines is the spoke is actually uh, this spoke over here that has turned uh, uh, to this position. In other words, the, the brain is misinterpreting uh, which spoke uh, it's seeing, and uh, because it imagines that um, the nearest spoke uh, on the next frame must be the, uh, the one that it's seeing, it, it sees the wheel turning the, the wrong way. Now, uh, because uh, this effect of strobing is um, usually undesirable in, uh, in animation, there's various ways of, uh, of approaching it. And uh, one thing which uh, is used in animation uh, because of this uh, effect is a motion blur. So when we have motion blur, uh, it um, helps us maintain this, this perception of, of motion. Uh, then there's also uh, the effect of um, visually stretching uh, an object. So uh, this effect of, of motion blur, we tend to see the object as being um, apparently larger due to the, due to the blur. Now, uh, this. Uh, change is not uh, an actual physical stretching of an object uh, when it's when it's falling. So in other words, the falling objects uh, do not get stretched by the force of gravity. In fact, something like a raindrop, as it's falling, um, if it's large enough, it, it actually gets squashed due to the pressure resulting from, from air resistance. So. Um, in uh, animation, especially in, in traditional um, hand-drawn, but, but even in uh, CG and uh, stop motion, uh, stretch is used when the action is, is quick uh, in order to, to reduce this um, unwanted strobing. So, uh, and the reason that stretch helps is that it helps to guide the brain as to uh, what it's seeing by minimizing the gap uh, between the positions from frame to frame. So here we see uh, an object that is uh, slowing out um, 
towards screen right. And uh, with stretch, we have uh, much smaller blank spaces uh, than uh, we would have if, if we had the same uh, slowing out um, without stretch. So now uh, the use of uh, stretch uh, has been extended and in fact it's um, uh, useful for certain stylized forms of animation, uh, sometimes called uh, smear. So uh, let's look at a short sequence from a classic example of uh, smear. So watch carefully in these uh, quick, quick actions. They are escorting Dora Standpipe. Dear rich Dora Standpipe, how I love her! Father's money. Now some of those are rather obvious uh, stretches. Now, watch the bottle and the hands. So if you uh, go frame by frame, uh, it's impressive how the animators stretched and smeared uh, the images, um, extreme uh, distortions. Um, uh, look at the uh, mouth of the bottle and the, the bartender's hands and um, uh, when you're when you're watching it it's uh, interestingly stylized but you're not uh, aware of it until it's um, pointed out so anyway very uh, successful effective use of uh, stretch to um, uh, control uh, strobing and and even to, to add a nice style so, in summary, uh, strobing is the disruption of the perception of motion for a sequence of images. The Nyquist effect uh, produces a false perception of motion due to similar duplicate images. That was the wagon wheel illusion. And then, uh, to minimize uh, the effects of strobing, we have uh, motion blur and uh, stretch, and uh, these can be uh, even extended to uh, create uh, interesting uh, stylistic effects in animation. So uh, stretch is um, something that we'll see again when we talk about uh, squash and stretch uh, with forces in some of the future tutorials. So see you then.